Hi everyone, it's Lauren coming at you from the Break Zone with another um, pre-release week re reveal. So this one being for Wind, so it's going to be pretty interesting. Uh, first one being, uh, so I'm going to go over the cards, I'm going to go over uh, my first impressions uh, regarding how good they are in Constructed as well as in Sealed, since Sealed will be a relevant format as uh, you can qualify for the North American Championship uh, by playing Sealed at Gen Con. Uh, so uh, we're going to start off with Evoker, um, haven't seen much use of it in Constructed, it's a reprint, so um, uh, it's already out in the wild and it's been there before and uh, hasn't been used since then. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not it gets used. There is a card that I'm going to talk about later that does use 1CP backups as a form of resource. That's going to be pretty interesting. But in terms of sealed, it's pretty nice that if it's a first turn, you can technically plop down the evoker as a 2CP with no abilities. Or later down the line, you could just go ahead and use it for as a 1CP if you have win backups available in order to play it out. And uh, as you all know in Sealed, uh, being able to curve out is pretty pretty good. So next up we have, well, I guess that is the next card. In case you're not familiar with it, we've got Zidane. So we have a Day 1 Errata, okay? Uh, I'm going to go over it real quick, read the ability. Uh, 4 drop 7k, a little bit on the curve. Uh, Genome, uh, the, the City of Final Fantasy, uh, category, ni category 9. With Zidane cannot be chosen by opponent's abilities. That is very relevant. Uh, when your opponent discards a card from his or her hand due to your summons or abilities, choose one uh, character activated. So keep in mind this has been errata to be choose one wind, wind character and activate it. So um, I'm going to talk about the relevance of that afterwards. Um, when Zidane attacks, your opponent reveals his or her hand. Uh, select one forward from their hand, your opponent discards that card. So this is pretty good. I mean, we're talking about a, a recurring discard effect. That's going to be good. Um, if they have forwards that they haven't been able to play out. So it's it's a little more niche than just anything else because for the most part, if you're being aggressive, uh, your opponent will most likely be playing out uh, their forwards in order to block. And um, so one thing that's going to be interesting about this is that uh, initially, if there was no errata, then you'd be able to use Zemus and just slaughter your opponent's hand. Now that it's been eroded and it's only uh, you can only activate a uh, a wind character, so you're gonna have to play around a little bit. There's definitely gonna be some ways to do it. Uh, I think uh, being able to uh, uh, I don't know if it's really good to activate Spice Million or something like that. I don't remember if there's too many wind characters that allow you to go uh, unblocked, for example. Um, but being able to reactivate win characters might be relevant enough to do some shenanigans. There's no, there's definitely not going to be a 3CP Ramza from plus one reactivating your Zemus, anything like that. Uh, now that it's been errata this card, uh, it's going to be interesting being able to be protected from opposing uh, your opponent's abilities. I think it's quite relevant. It's a little bit under curve, but being able to sometimes get the effect of discarding a forward from your opponent's hand is going to be good. If you're able to... Uh, for example, um, use Leviathan to return a forward to your opponent's hand uh, once a Dane attacks and then uh, remove it from the field that way. Uh, that's going to be good in my opinion, very good. So that's definitely an option I'm going to think about building a deck around uh, because that way it's uh, you're going to be able to uh, pretty much be kind of like Chaos Walker with Yuna. You're, you're going to be able to use so much... Uh, synergy from uh, wind water that I think this card might uh, this, this card could be quite relevant even if errata, even after the errata okay all right next up we've got Sid so this is a card I was talking to you uh, telling you about uh, regarding uh, having extra uses out of 1 CP backups so um, four cost backup so that's kind of heavy but uh, if you dole and if you dole it, you're able to search for one backup of cost one and add it to your hand. So as we saw with uh, uh, the flaws from Opus, I think it was Opus 4, uh, being able to get uh, cards from your deck to thin out your deck and um, maybe either play them out or discard them can be relevant. So let's say you have this in first turn, you play it. Then after that, you could search out your uh, evokers. Here, let me pull it up again in case you're not familiar with it again. Uh, one cost CP wind evokers you're going to be able to get your evokers going to be able to play it out so you'll have a uh, two CP available uh, on turn three then if you want you can do that again if you have more evokers then you go ahead and you play get another one bam 
third turn, you you could go ahead. Okay, so first turn, you play your Sid, right? Then you dole it. Your second turn, you get your evoker. Okay, uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, actually, hold on. First turn comes to play dole. Second turn, react it activates. Then you could go ahead and switch out an evoker, maybe play another another backup or anything else. Uh, after that, like, I mean, unless you kind of curve out, it's going to be interesting if people want to make use of that. Uh, one thing that I can think about that's going to be really interesting, though, is that if you put a decent amount of one CP backups and you play a uh, multiple color deck with a... Uh, a multiple ele element deck with uh, this Sid being part of the centerpieces, you can search out uh, one CP backups of any element. It doesn't specify this, this has to be wind. And on top of that, uh, let's say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to thin out my deck. I only need one backup to play my cards. Okay, go ahead, play the Sid. If they don't have anything that kind of either breaks it, which right now, most of the time, people don't play uh, uh, abilities uh, or summons, that deal with uh, breaking full, uh, backups of cost three or more. You do have to worry about things like uh, uh, Porum, for example, uh, being able to stop abilities. I think there's a Leviathan, Hill Gigas, as well as definitely the Emperor being able to stop all uh, activated abilities as well as specials. But otherwise, like if you play a, ve a very aggressive deck where you definitely want some backups early on, but afterwards you, you don't want them so much, go ahead, use it, get an Evoker, Evoker, you put it in your hand, discard it for CP, and now you, you're turning this into a, a, a backup that can thin out your deck and get you two CP a turn. If As long as you have more one CP backups in your deck, I think that can be very relevant. Uh, when we talk about sealed, being able to curve out, being able to get the, uh, the backups that you need can be relevant as well. So I think it's going to be, uh, there's definitely some uses in constructed and in sealed. It's going to be useful as well being able to curve out because uh, sometimes you, the card economy of curving out in sealed can make or break the game. Okay. Next up, we've got Sid Hayes, three cost backup, X burst. Uh, so this Sid Reigns, uh, Sid Hayes, sorry, uh, is kind of like a brawn. The, the fact that he has EX and searches out a job standard unit and to add it to your hand. So if you were to go ahead and uh, it adds more synergy to the uh, standard unit deck that relies on the 2CP backup arc, as well as the Opus 1 Water, Water Warrior of Light. So being able to use, like there's just so many tools in Wind Water standard units uh, to be used together. Uh, there's gonna be some uses for it if you build that deck. And in terms of uh, sealed, if you're playing wind, you most likely will have standard unit uh, forwards in your deck as uh, you need usually a couple of fillers and be able to get that card economy and be able to pick out exactly the one that you want uh, can help you out a lot. So I'm going to expect to see this card being used and constructed for standard unit decks and definitely in sealed. Uh, if you have it, uh, you'll most likely be using it if you're, if you're using wind as one of your main elements. Okay. Next up, we've got White Mage, uh, two drop backup. This card is really good in terms of what it can do for Constructed. Sealed is gonna be a two CP backup, but being able to choose one card you opponent, in your opponent's break zone and remove it from the game is really good. There's a lot, of, like part of the, uh, some of the strongest decks in the meta usually use um, ways to get forwards, forwards or summons back from the break zone. Uh, keep in mind that uh, most abilities that target uh, a forward or a summon in a break zone require targets when they're uh, uh, when they're being used. So, if they, for example, this is a problematic one. First of all, you play the white mage, you pick out a, a summon or a summon or forward that you find you think they might be able to get back to their hand and play again. Get rid of that one. But also, if it's ever active, you could go ahead and use it to. Or even a different uh, a different backup that you have active, go ahead and like leave it active, uh, use it for one CP that it needs for its ability, and then after that go ahead and pick the target that they choose. So if they use a devout and use a white mage in response, the devout already targeted, and then use a white mage and uh, you technically take out the devout target, uh, fizzle the devout, and you take out a devout with a white mage. So most people that are familiar with that. Uh, interaction pretty much the white mage being able to be used is going to be a counter to let's say 
uh, devout, I think minor, uh, probably not Mark Mobius though, but uh, no, no, not Mark Mobius, so uh, minor, Tama, I think also. So there's going to be a decent amount of cards that you're going to be able to stop when they're trying to do uh, recursion, such as also Ice Scholar. So I think this card's going to see play. I think it's a pretty good card to uh, take care of some of the problematic uh, effects that are currently in the meta. And uh, I'm pretty excited to have this card around. Okay. Next up, we've got Shinra. So Shinra, uh, four drop backup experts, and uh, when it enters the field, uh, being able to search out a gold wing forward, add it to your hand. So the, the gold wings are um, Yuna, Riku, and Pain. So uh, it's left to be seen whether or not the Yuna, Riku, Pain, the... Um, the Ford version from Opus 6 is gonna actually going to come out and be very effective. I'm excited to see it. I want to see it work. Uh, but uh, there's a possibility this card's going to work out for it. There's also another uh, backup that can search out the Final Fantasy X Fords. And that card is Brother. That was in the Opus 1 starter deck for Wind Water. So it'll be interesting if you need both of them or if people are going to opt to use this card more often depending on how aggressive the meta is and how much they're going to get it off EX Burst. Because uh, the other one... Is, able, is a 3 cost backup with no experts, while this one has an expert, it's 4 cost. So we'll see what happens. Um, it's going to be interesting, but with so much synergy, uh, you could, unless this card is still going to be very prevalent uh, be, due to its cost, uh, due to the cost of the cards, such as the Yuna and the Rikus and the Pains from Opus 6, uh, there's a possibility that the Gold Wings are going to come out on top, and I'm excited to see whether or not that happens. So in Constructed or in Sealed, you can definitely search them out if they're part of your deck in Constructed. And in Sealed, if you have any Gold Wings, then uh, I would recommend that you use Shinra as one of your backups, especially uh, if you're in Wind. Okay. Next up, we've got Zoo. It's a monster. It activates for free. It's a 4 cost. And it turns into a 7,000 power forward, which is okay. But uh, when Zoo attacks, choose one backup you control, activate it. Uh, so... Uh, this is going to be pretty interesting. If you're able to use it with the Dane and Zemus, uh, that's going to be pretty funny. Uh, not sure if that's what you're going to want to do. Uh, you, because if you party attack... Nope, that doesn't work because party attack, uh, Zemus will only pick one forward. And if you have Zidane and Zoo attack together, then they are now blockable because Zoo will be blockable while Zidane is not. Uh, being able to activate a backup it could be relevant. Not quite sure how much. So that remains to be seen. But the fact that, uh, for example, you'll be able to maybe use Spice Million instead of Zemus to do things, and after that, activate backups. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that too much right now, but uh, that's kind of cool. And in uh, Sealed, um, I don't know. I, I really, I, I, maybe I don't have enough experience in Sealed, uh, but we will see how well that goes. All right. Next up, we've got cute little Chocobo, Theater Rhythm. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, not going to be allowed in title series. <laughs> so 3 cost, 3k. Uh, when Chocobo enters the field, you replay one card named Chocobo from your hand onto the field. So there's definitely different versions of Chocobo you can play. Uh, unfortunately for this Chocobo, like, it's, it's not that big. It is a multi-card though, and a standard unit. So there's definitely some bonuses. This is definitely a power boost, or a, this could be a nice addition to... Uh, Chocobo decks, but I don't know. I mean, it feels a little bit, I guess you could say, greedy to to think I'm going to play this Chocobo and get another card out of my hand that's going to be another Chocobo. Uh, this one being so small that it might not be that relevant at most times, but uh, maybe somebody will make it work. But it feels like it's a little bit greedy. But then again, it's not like I, I saw a Turbo Discard become, I, I foresaw Turbo Discard being the power the powerhouse that it was in Opus 5 until they actually came to be. So I could be wrong. Uh, in terms of sealed, I would advise against using it unless, well, actually, I, I would definitely advise against using it if I were you. Uh, I don't feel like a 3,000 power forward is really worth using, especially when you can't consistently get more chocobos in your deck because you are stuck with the cards that you actually open in your packs. So uh, unless you have a very valid reason to use chocobo, I don't think it's going to be that useful in sealed, unfortunately. Next up, we've got Chocomog. Uh, it's neither a Chocobo nor a Mog. It's a Chocomog summon. Uh, one cost, which is pretty good. And Experts. Wow. Okay. 
So search for one job Chocobo or job Moogle and add it to your hands. So uh, we're going to have other cards I'm going to show later that might actually have uh, cool things uh, coming to play with it. Um, and there's definitely some other ch uh, Chocobos or Moogles that could become relevant, but I'll go over, over it later. Uh, being able to uh, get Moogles, specifically Moogle 11, to be able to use a special could be quite relevant, and I'll go over it when I go over the card later on. Uh, so in Constructed, most likely yes. There's going to be ways to use it if you build your deck around it. It is a Final Fantasy VII uh, summon, by the way, uh, and Mobius, but in Sealed, maybe not quite as much. Okay. Next up, we've got Diablos. I personally, I like this card. Okay. So being, as long as uh, it actually resolved, it resolves, be able to get to draw a card from playing this card means that it technically costs you only one CP, which is very good. And if you attack with some of your smaller forwards that might, which is at times uh, the general game plan for uh, for win as their forwards are not always the largest, being able to turn into a 4K can just swing the tide. So it makes your, your 7K forwards, if they don't have any boost, uh, run into like an 8k forward and turn into a, f a 4k instead and win out the trade that's going to be good i think this card is really good uh, in terms of constructed or sealed uh, i i really like it either way uh if you play very aggressive so um i would advise you to use this card as it doesn't have a requirement of whether or not it is uh, attacking blocking dull or active so four thousand power and uh, being able to draw a card for three is very good okay Next up, we've got oh, all that pain. All right, four cost AK on curve. Uh, jump going forwards you control cannot be chosen by open summons. I think that's good. Uh, Garnet has seen some play. It's not quite as relevant as being able to protect yourself from abilities, but I think it's still pretty good. Uh, and uh, having a special that's assault for uh, discarding a copy of itself and one wind CP. That all the job goal wings to control gain haste until the end of the turn. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, there's not that many goal wings. Uh, being able to turn other forwards into goal wings would be interesting with Hashmal, for example, or uh, having the legendary bards from Opus 3 or the rare bards from Opus 1 would be might be pretty interesting, but uh, that remains to be seen. I don't feel too impressed by this. Uh, but the special, but I really like the uh, being able to uh, get protection from summons depending on which deck you're playing against, or if you're able to get the full combo of Yuna, Riku, and Pain together. And if you're playing sealed, full cost AK is probably going to be a card that you're going to use. All right, next up we've got part of the other trio, a uh, different trio in the set, uh, Fujin. Uh, that's uh, DFF eight. Disciplinary committee member, three cost backup with experts, which is always good, especially when you can uh, search out your deck for a card named Cypher and add it to your hand. And uh, also, Cypher will gain first strike. So, uh, I'll discuss Cypher in the Lightning, uh, uh, Lightning, what's it called, uh, reveal of Opus 6. And hopefully, you'll be excited about it. There's also other copies of Cypher from previous Opuses. Uh, I believe it was mostly Opus 1, there were two copies. But either way, uh, there's two copies in Opus 6 as well, so that's gonna be, uh, that could be relevant in Constructed as well as in, uh, in Sealed. So uh, keep that in mind that this card might be good if you play uh, Wind Lightning that includes Cypher as part of your main game plan. All right, next up we've got Geomancer, yay. All right, two cost backup, always relevant, multi-card center unit, Final Fantasy Tactics A2, and uh, Dole and put you a message to the break, so choose one attacking forward, dealing 4,000 damage. So um, if you use this in, uh, along with uh, Diablos, that would be pretty interesting. So let me pull up Diablos again for all of you to see. Uh, let's see, right here. So that'd be pretty interesting, you know, like 4,000 damage, turn into a 4,000 uh, forward. That could work together. Uh, otherwise, I think the ability is a little bit niche. I don't love it unless uh, uh, my uh, my force at first strike. But then again, uh, being that it's an activated ability, my it's a very uh, 
telegraph move where they know you have that option and if they attack into it they probably have a counter plan otherwise uh, that feels like a misplay all right let's see next up we've got a very interesting card i'm very excited for this one paul so paul is a two cost 4k forward from far fantasy uh, two that's a thief and uh Paul cannot be blocked by a forward of cost 3 or more, so only forwards of cost 2 or less can block him. And when Paul deals damage to, an opponent, uh, to your opponent, your opponent puts the top 5 cards of his or her deck into the break zone. So I think that is very relevant. Uh, just as a lot of uh, uh, a, like Opus 1 Zidane kind of forced people to play a, a couple of 2 and 3 costs to be able to block it. I think Paul might be the beginning of, of a 2CP forwards meta as uh, you don't want to leave yourself wide open to Paul unless you have a lot of uh, uh, a lot of ways to remove it. I mean, at 4,000 power, it would be susceptible to the Dialuma Cactuar combos, for example. Uh, but it's going to be hard to block otherwise if you don't remove it right away. And if it attacks you like two or three times, you're going to start running out of deck. And in sealed, if you don't have a... A two cost forward that's effective against Paul, and you don't have much removal, and he he hits you a couple times. You're gonna lose like a good eighth or a quarter or even half of your deck after a couple of attacks. So you need to be careful. Uh, this card is uh, very powerful in my opinion, as long as it remains unchecked. Uh, so if you're not if your deck is not built around being able to block it, you will. There's a high chance that you're gonna have problems being able to deal with it, as it's gonna just uh, kind of make mill a thing all right so next card actually i don't have so i'm gonna go ahead and kind of make believe i have it here it's already been spoiled uh, a while back um, i think it was by kageyama actually so uh, two cost forward named maria and uh, 5000 power forward from Ka from final fantasy 2 that's a rebel uh if you dole you dole it choose one category two forward you control other than maria it gains plus 2000 power till i return that's pretty good um after that, uh, another ability would be to dole to deal 1,000 damage to all four of the open control. So that's going to be useful in uh, Wind Lightning, for example. And a third ability uh, for one Wind CP and to dole it. Choose one forward during this turn. The next damage dealt to it is reduced by 3,000 power, 3,000 instead. So that is very relevant, in my opinion, especially when kind of having uh, forwards that uh, uh, maybe blockers or something like that uh, during this turn. Yeah. Uh, blockers and other things where your opponent might be trying to do combat tricks that's gonna be pretty useful unfortunately maria is quite susceptible to uh, uh many effects and much removal but if you play uh, put a deck together that's uh, based around final fantasy 2 this card would be pretty good so i want being so flexible with so many uh abilities and options i think it's gonna be good to be able to see if this card is going to be that effective or not uh in sealed i think uh it's going to be quite relevant to be able to for example uh Blocker, I mean, attack with an AK into an AK and then reduce the amount of damage that is dealt to that forward by 3,000, keeping your AK alive while there's uh, there's close to the break zone. So if your opponent sees that, that's, since it's very telegraphed, it's an activated ability, then uh, most likely they'll let a lot of your attackers just, as long as they deal in, they're large enough to deal enough damage to trade, they'll probably end up just going through instead. So... I think that's gonna that's gonna be good. That's gonna be interesting, and I do want to want to see Final Fantasy II becoming a a major force. So I, I look forward to seeing this card in play. Next up, we got Mugo, one of my favorite cards in the set. Actually, uh, good thing it's a rare. <laughs> uh, so two cost backup, which is amazing uh, from Final Fantasy XI, which is searchable by Star Symbol, by the way. Um, Job class Moogle, which is also searchable by uh, like Sarah and such. Um, special, retrieve, uh, discard a copy of itself and dole search for one card and add it to your hand. That's any card. We're talking about summons, backups, anything. I don't advise you to use Moogle to search out on Moogle, but if you want to thin out your deck, go ahead. But uh, being able to, to have a two cost backup that's a unique character that has so much utility is insane and being able to build a deck that revolves around uh, silver bullets you could say 
copies of cards, only one copy of a card, but that's really relevant in certain matchups and being able to search that out with Moogle is going to be huge. And there's different ways to actually get Moogle back from your break zone to your hand if you start discarding extra copies of it uh, to be able to use it, to, to use a special. And we're talking about, uh, I think it was like Opus 2 Ashura, but also, as we mentioned, Chocomog is able to not only search out this Moogle, but is also able to... Uh, uh, what's it called on the EX burst being able to uh, go search out uh, chocobos so being able to if you build a deck that's around that's based around Moogles and chocobos that has wind in it I would highly advise using the combination of these two being able to search out or and retrieve extra copies to kind of get your silver bullets would be very interesting uh, I mean it's a little bit slow at times you could think but also if you have spare CP uh, to use the your opponent's turn, you could, you know, use Moogle to kind of get this back, uh, to uh, to play this card out during your opponent's turn, and after that, you get a copy of Moogle, and, uh, of Mog, oh, Moogle, sorry. And then during your turn, you're able to search out whatever you need, and then, like, play it out. So, I think it's going to be very interesting. I look forward to seeing this card a lot. Uh, yeah, I, I do expect the foils to go for a lot, too. This card is going to be amazing. Uh, two costs with a special that is so useful. Wow, I am just like amazed by this card. All right, let's see. Next up, we've got Wingvern. So uh, two costs, uh, multi multi card monster. That's a dragon from type zero. Uh, so this is not one of the ones that go that turn to fours, unfortunately. But uh, for one win CP and one of any color, uh, any element. Uh, put Wingvern to the break zone, choose one forward of power 9,000 or more and break it. So uh, depending on how much uh, 9,000 power fours become popular, whether it is in constructed or sealed, I haven't, I've seen some 9,000 power uh, forwards in sealed, but in constructed, there's, there's a few, but this comes at a pretty heavy cost. It doesn't feel like you're getting it for cheap. And there's other ways in constructed to deal with 9,000 power fours that are already available for about the same cost of four. So I don't expect Constructed to be really uh, using this card too much, but in Sealed, uh, I would expect people to at least uh, consider putting one or two copies of this uh, card in their deck, as uh, if an opposing forward is 9,000 power, it's d tough to deal with. And Wingvern would be able to just kind of save you from such, uh, such problems. All right, next up we've got Lesaford. Hmm. Okay, it's a seven cost backup. Wow, it costs as much as her total to play. But uh, technically, it comes in and uh, acts kind of like a two CP backup because you're able to look at the top five cards of your deck, uh, play a win character, so not forward, but a character, of cost five or less among them onto the field, and return the other cards above your deck in any order. So if you build your deck based around uh, five CP win characters, Lesser Ford can become quite handy. Uh, unfortunately, I, I think his second ability uh, is not quite as relevant to me, or at least I haven't thought about, about too many uses for it. Being, being able to use one win CP Dolit and to put Lesser Ford into the break zone, choose one forward during this turn, the next damage it deals to a forward becomes zero instead. I don't know how relevant that would be. And so, uh, I don't know, that's left to be, uh, be said. But... The first ability could be relevant. I don't know. Seven cost is a lot. It feels a little bit like it takes a decent amount of setup to get it done, not only in terms of deck construction, but also how you play out your hands. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see whether or not uh, there's a lot of uh, five win, five cost win characters that are worth playing uh, to use this card. Next up, we've got uh, Raptor. Uh, three cost on a unit, 6k power, uh, multi-card uh, from Final Fantasy Tactics Advance 2. If you control a category Final Fantasy Tact Tactics Advance 2 forward other than Raptor, Raptor gains 2,000 power. So uh, it's technically a 3-drop AK, so we've seen that before from in other elements as well. I don't know how much uh, win really needed something like that, and I don't know how often you'll actually have that ability go off. Even if you build your deck around it, let's say you put... A bunch of uh, Adele's and Lua's in there. It's still just going to be a 3-drop AK. Is that relevant enough? I mean, with Lua special, I suppose it could be. But 
it feels like a little bit too much setup to get uh, an effect that I don't feel is so backbreaking that you really need it and construct it. Uh, in Sealed, I don't even know if you're going to be able to get enough uh, Final Fantasy Tactics Advanced 2 forwards to be able to make it go off. So uh, feel free to prove me wrong and I will be happy to uh, do a second, a second impression video to correct myself. Next up, we've got Riku. I like Riku. 3 cost 7k, that's on curve. Uh, forward, go wings, Final Fantasy X, so searchable with both uh, Brother as well as Shinra earlier, as I showed it. Uh, let me search it out again. And Shinra is an uh, expert, by the way. Uh, let me see where I put it. There we go. Shinra. All right. Uh, for the job going forwards you control cannot be chosen by opponent's abilities. I think that's huge, personally. Uh, being able to protect yourself, especially from uh, uh, like Dialuma and Cactuar, is going to be huge. And she protects herself when she is on the field. It's a field ability. She protects other goal wings. I think that's going to be great. I really like this card. Uh, and her special escape. For dis if you discard a copy of herself, you don't even need to dole her for this. Uh, remove Riku from the battle. Uh, you can only use his ability when Riku is in battle. So if you were to uh, attack into and your opponent has some party tricks, she would be able to kind of uh, protect herself. Uh, to Instead of having you pay to put her out again, you can instead just remove, remove her from the battle. Let's say if your opponent does something like a uh, Opus 4 Hecaton here, then go ahead and just kind of remove her from the battle. Oh, actually, she, she has to be in battle. So they'd have to do a Hecaton cure during battle targeting Riku for it to be that useful. So it's a little bit niche, but um, if she's attacking and then they have special combat tricks, you'll be able to kind of uh, go ahead and make them waste some cards and some uh, CP uh, to be able to, uh, to actually try to do it. But for the most part, if they do it that way, it might be a misplay or sometimes it's because you put so much pressure that they have to call whether or not you have the bluff. And uh, last but not least for wind, we've got Leon, you you rebel, you opus to rebel, uh, you are uh, sorry. Category two, rebel, one CP AK, which sounds amazing until you read that uh, when he enters the field, you're putting against control of Leon. And when a Category 2 character, your opponent enters, uh, when a Category 2 character of your opponent enters the field, your opponent gains control of Leon. So, if your deck is based around Final Fantasy 2, uh, let's say you play title series, this is great. If your opponent, especially since you'll know that your opponent's not playing uh, uh, Category 2 uh, after a couple cards that they play out, because, you know, they can only use Category 2 cards, or, or uh, uh, cards of a specific category together. So you'll be able to tell whether or not they're going that direction. Um, it sounds kind of cool, but I think that for the effect, one cost AK might not be enough, especially when you give it to your opponent first. So unless you're, you're able to play out uh, two category two characters uh, uh, back to back, then you are giving Leon to your opponent. So what, like it remains to be seen whether or not this card is going to be that good. I mean, sure, it, it comes at a pretty cheap cost, but... Uh, the best way to put it to uh, play it effectively or efficiently would be to use a uh, win backup to be able to play it. And that means that it's not really an aggressive play. It's more of a mid lane gameplay. So there's definitely some combos that might come up that, that would be pretty interesting to see whether or not they, uh, they kind of pull through. But I'm really on the fence about it. And in uh, Sealed, like, so in Constructed, uh, I'm really kind of iffy about it. In Sealed, I'm even more iffy because I don't even know how many uh, Category 2 characters you will be able to get in your sealed, in your packs. So, unless, like, even if you could do it, like, 50% of the time, uh, I would still be weary of having this card stuck in my hand as I wouldn't want to give my opponent an AK uh, 8,000 power forward. So, uh, thank you very much for tuning in. If you have any more uh questions or, or comments, feel free to put them down below. Uh, otherwise, go ahead and check out our sponsors, MagicTechGames.com, uh, as uh, they are uh, doing a trade program uh, where you can turn in, uh, trade in some of your cards from different opuses and uh, be able to uh, trade them out to uh, maybe buy some uh, sealed boxes for the release uh, of Opus 6 so that you can turn in your spare cards into, uh, well, 
this brand new pack so you could practice sealed for Gen Con and hopefully uh, qualify for the North America Championship and maybe even Worlds. So thank you very much for tuning in. I'm Lord from the Break Zone and I'll catch you next time.